Moving on to table and data management. CSVs are a popular format for use in ArcGIS because they take up little space and are easily imported without being corrupted. If you have a table that needs to be imported into a GIS, I highly recommend you convert that file to a CSV if it's not in that format already. Many other formats, including Excel documents, become corrupted or will throw out an error. It'll save you a ton of time and stress if you just convert the file to a CSV from the get-go. If you have not worked with a CSV before, you should open one up in a text editor, like Notepad or the equivalent, as well as Microsoft Excel to better understand how they work. A true CSV is really just a text file with row and column names and values separated by commas, hence comma separated values. Other characters can be used, but commas are the most common. Tables are made up of rows and columns. Rows and columns are called different things depending on your area of study. In ArcGIS, columns are called fields and rows are called records. However, in ArcGIS, the table is called an attribute table because the table manages attributes by storing and editing information. Each record in the table represents one feature and all records have the same number of fields. Fields contain information about the records, such as names, areas, IDs, and other characteristics. Spatial tables are special. They can have XY coordinates, Z coordinates, as well as a spatial reference system. Within the attribute table, you can name columns, calculate fields, compute summary statistics, as well as other common data table tasks. I mentioned that CSVs are a good choice to use within ArcGIS because they work well together, but that's partially because they do not have any formatting. They only contain headings and values, which is ideal. If a spreadsheet is formatted, I can almost guarantee you it will not work properly when imported into ArcGIS. When working with data, try to use numbers as a code for text attributes. For example, use a value of 47, which is a zip code for Tennessee, instead of writing out Tennessee. You are much more likely to create a spelling error that will throw off your analysis. It will also take longer to process because the computer has to analyze 10 characters instead of two. And this is true for each record. So if you had all the counties in Tennessee, that would be times 95. Metadata is data about your data. When thinking about working with a table, I want you to remember the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated. Make notes about all your changes that you made and any definitions. If you recorded Tennessee as 47 rather than Tennessee, make sure to note that to help whoever uses your data set in the future, including yourself. I just want you to dip your toes into database management. Databases are just a fancy word for tables that are connected to other tables based on the same values. Say you have a table of all the counties in Tennessee with their population counts, and then another table with Tennessee County tree density data. Because both have county information, they could be joined to create a database. Database files are in all GIS data files. Okay, here we go. Domains are the set of values allowed in a column. This helps lower the likelihood of making an error during data entry. It will let you know if you entered a value of 12 when only values of 0 to 10 are allowed or if you type 1-0 instead of 1-0. Tables need to have a unique identifier. A unique identifier is a column that has a special value for every row to differentiate it from other rows within the table. Super keys are those that have attributes that can uniquely identify a record in a table. A primary key is a super key that was chosen as the official unique ID. Candidate keys are usually the runner-up and consist of a field, or the combination of multiple fields that can uniquely identify a record. Keys that require two or more fields to uniquely identify a feature are called composite keys. If a key is not the primary key, it is also defined as a secondary or alternative key. Foreign keys are the field in another table that matches with the one that you have. Using the example from earlier, if you have a table of Tennessee counties with population data as the main table, the primary key is the county name field and the foreign key is the county name field from the Tennessee County Tree Density Table. You do not need to memorize these terms, just keep them in mind as you advance your career and you're working with GIS data.